Lots of excitement, anticipation, and questions surrounding the news that at least two and maybe three coronavirus vaccines could soon be on their way. One question people have is, will the coronavirus vaccine recommendations be similar to the flu vaccine? Should you get it if you aren't feeling well or wait? Dr. Sanjay Gupta explains. The reason you typically are told not to get the uh, flu vaccine if you're not feeling well is because the, the way that these vaccines work is that they sort of rev up your, your immune system. If your immune system is already busy fighting something else, then uh, it may not respond as well, or it may, you, may not, you, you may just not feel as well. If you're asymptomatic, you should go ahead and, and feel comfortable getting the vaccine when it's your turn. And what about the storage requirements of one of those vaccines? How will we know it's been kept at the proper low temperature until the point of injection? What Pfizer's doing is that they're creating their own cold storage boxes. There's going to be these boxes that you see. Uh, they're going to hold, you know, thousands of doses of the, the vaccine, and that's what's going to be used to transport. But within those boxes is also going to be these sensors uh, that tell you, has the temperature been consistent? Has it had any drops? Uh, and make sure that the vaccines, at least from that standpoint, have not had any problems. Dr. Gupta reminds us that with this worldwide vaccination effort, there will be a lot of steps and checks along the way. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Biggin. This is a historic day, an historic day for science and for all of us. Albert Borla is CEO of Pfizer, and he's talking about their vaccine for COVID-19. 248 days from an idea to now, applying for the vaccine to be authorized. That's just eight months. For context, eight years would have been considered speedy. But the truth is, the story I'm about to tell you actually began more than two decades ago. And to really understand it, you first have to understand how most vaccines work. Since the first vaccine for smallpox back in 1796, they've all relied on the same basic concept. Give a little piece of the virus, also known as antigen, to someone, not enough to make them sick. And their body will then be taught to make antibodies to it. Those are the proteins that neutralize the virus if it ever tried to invade again. That's what makes you immune. But what if the body could be taught to do the whole thing? Not just make antibodies, but also to make the antigens as well, to essentially become its own vaccine-making machine. It's why in the 2000s, Dr. Drew Weissman started focusing on this tiny strand of genetic material that our cells make all the time. It's known as mRNA. Back then, we were thinking of using it for vaccines, for therapeutic proteins, for gene editing, for lots of different applications. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. It carries the instructions for making whatever protein you want. Once you've got the sequence, it's a one-step reaction to make RNA. And that reaction is identical for every vaccine that we make. If this sounds more like code in a computer rather than medicine from a lab, that means you're getting it. This is an entirely new way of thinking about vaccines. It's also the basic technology behind Pfizer and Moderna's COVID-19 vaccines. Vaccines are close by, they're coming. You know, I said help is on the way. It's truly bio meets tech. The vaccine is not the virus at all. It's essentially just a genetic code for a portion of the virus. This portion, the spike protein. Why the spike protein? Because it's the key the virus uses to enter the human cell. But if you create antibodies to the spike protein, it's then blocked. So putting it all together, once the vaccine made up of genetic code is administered through a shot in the arm, our own cells then start making the spike protein over and over again. Now remember, you're just making a part of the virus, so you can't get infected from this vaccine. And within days after that, the body reacts and starts churning out the antibodies. Plug and play. With RNA, all you need is the sequence of the protein of interest. Within weeks, you can have a new vaccine. It's a technology that could help lead us out of this pandemic. We're gonna get a heck of a lot of help from a very efficacious vaccine, two vaccines,
that just two weeks ago and this past week was shown to be extremely effective, I mean efficacious, in, in 95% and 94.5%. If true, remarkable results for an entirely new type of vaccine and also a new way of thinking about medicines going forward. We're going to see very short supplies of vaccines over the next six months. Um, and there's going to be a mad rush for them. And our hope and our goal as WHO and the COVAX uh, partnership of Gavi and CEPI and WHO, our hope is that we're able to achieve equitable access. We're able to get enough vaccines, whatever number of vaccines there are available. We hope that we can have them distributed around the world so we can protect those who are at the front lines, the most vulnerable. Um, who need to be urgently protected rather than, you know, vaccinating uh, entire populations of some countries while everyone else is waiting in line. That's what we're working towards, and we really hope that we're able to do that. Now, whatever this, the circumstances, it's going to take a year to even begin to cover 15 to 20 percent of the world's population, if you take the entire world. And that we, we believe that 20 percent should be the people at highest risk of either getting the infection or dying, they should be prioritized. It's only in 2022 that we can begin to see a much wider vaccination program. 